Well, hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my world of model railroading. This is Dan here, as always, I'm at my workbench, and we're going to be doing another covered hopper. This is the third car I've done so far for my AEX Salt Train. This one I've already kind of prepped up a little bit uh, for a very special prototype that I've been saving uh, just for a video. It's a very, very heavily rusted car, and we'll show it in a minute. Uh, just to kind of get you guys up to date what we're doing, we're working on some Intermountain 4750s. These are very nice cars when you can get them. Uh, I buy these up whenever I can, plain ones, and I just strip the lettering off and have them for project cars. I got about 12 more of these I got to do. Uh, they're all various Chicago, Northwestern, and like Cargill cars, other paint schemes that I got to weather up and work on. But this is going to be the last plain gray one that I'm going to be doing. I've already done a whole bunch, uh, but they're all done. They're kind of in the corner here, and I'll show them in a later video. Anyway, the car we're going to be working on now, like I said, is another AEX Salt Hauler. These are all old grain hoppers that have been converted for bulk salt service. And these things are notorious for rusting like crazy. They're notorious for being in absolutely horrid condition, rusty, old relics, basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be patching this one, decaling it, and weathering it to match a particular prototype. So let me show you guys the actual prototype we're going to be modeling. Check this out. This is AEX... 11861 here. Now, if I actually uh, get up here a little bit better, you guys can see this a little better. There we go. Notice here the patching, and then notice the amount of crazy rust on the sides. You got some cool patching there, old patching there. The ribs are getting torn up. You got the safety stripes. Then two different kinds of patching. You got the old patching, like I said, the new patching, the AEX decals, and then the resprayed data there. Along the sides you got the safety stripes. Uh, a lot of heavy rust pitting. Tons of rust. Notice all that rust. There's some data that we gotta decal, but notice that the bays are pretty clean other than some kick up and some weird scattered rust. And then on the underbody you got a lot of uh, heavy chipping and stuff. And then pretty standard grime on the uh, wheels there. And then the ends are actually pretty clean too as you can see. Something interesting on this car that I, I'm looking forward to modeling, I've never actually tried this before. Notice the roof walk on this car, this gray part, and the hatches. Notice they're very clean. The lock bars are very rusty. They're old, the original, but the hatches have been replaced. The roof walk is bright silver. It's been replaced, more than likely, because if it was the original, it would have been rusted to hell, uh, like as you'd commonly see on these cars. But in this particular case, it's clean, which indicates to me that these were actually replaced. So I'm going to be modeling a car that has replaced roof walks and hatches on the top. And then on the sides, again, we got the data. And then we got lots and lots of rust. And on the rust itself, we got two different colors. We got the, um, actually three, dark rust pits starting with black, working into brown. And then surrounding that, you got burnt umber and some burnt sienna rust. So we got two different, or three different colors of rust, like I said, that we got to model on this car. Now, I've done bleeders like this before. They're always very fun to do, but they're very time-consuming. So we got a lot of work to do on this one. But I'm going to be showing you guys how to model a lot of this rust, this pitting, and everything else. Uh, but like I said, once you get going on this kind of a project, at first it may seem daunting, but it gets once you get going, like I said, it, it usually uh, falls together very easily. So we'll be doing this step by step here, and I'm going to be showing you guys that. Now, um, as I said before, I got a bunch of these different cars. This one was an old Mopac car. I just stripped all the old data off. It actually had some damage on it. That's why it's got these weird paint patches on the sides where I actually had to touch up the paint a little bit. And it's just done roughly. Since this is going to be a heavily rusted car, I'm not too worried about the uh, bright finish on the car. But as you can see, I actually applied a slight airbrush uh, grime tint to the underbody to get the car prepped. And I've also done the kick-up spray, the start of the kick-up spray on both ends just like what the prototype has, because these cars get a lot of wheel spray in this open end cage. Uh, so that's just been prepped up like normal. Uh, the main focus on this car is obviously the brush technique, so I'm not too worried about showing off the airbrush work. I've shown enough videos you can look back on and watch to see how I do all that. That's very simple. That's just a heavy wash of acrylic uh, mixed together with some alcohol, sprayed in the airbrush, about 40 PSI, and you get a lot of good splatter and stuff for these end cages. It's a good way to do that kick up. And then everything else on these bays I'll be doing uh, with brush techniques, basically. So, uh, also on the top, I just sprayed a little bit of primer coat of grime around these walkways. And I gotta take these hatches off. We'll get those off, and we can start masking up these walkways, 
getting those pr uh, patched up, and then we can start working on all the heavy rust. Uh, the first thing we got to do here is also decal the sides. We need to put the appropriate decaling on. I'm only going to be doing some of the decaling, so only the base patch work, and then, like again, all of the data that's supposed to be here. This is a former NAHX car, and it has all of the standard data, which I have a decal set for, so I'll be cutting out the decals uh, and applying those. So I'll go ahead and do that now, and we'll start the weathering process. Alright, so this is some of the basic data I'm going to be applying. I got the uh, some car dimensional data, some warning car data information again here, cut out of various microscale sheets, and then I got the microscale uh, lube stencil decal, and then this is some microscale trim film, which is a great material to use for patching. Uh, you can, of course, do patching uh, by painting it and masking it if you want, uh, but in this particular case, I'm just going to use the trim film. I've done it on a number of times, but it'll just save some time, and I'm trying to, again, model this particular patching here. This is white patching, but it's just been so heavily rusted over that it looks yellow in the picture, so I'm going to be using that. And then, of course, there's the fresher AEX patches, but we're not going to apply those yet. Those are going to come later. And then these uh, re-stencil car data, we'll add that also later. So this is what we need to just add for now. Alright, the decals are on. It only took about 10 minutes. They're sealed up pretty well. And uh, I'm pretty happy with that. You can see the uh, patch out area there. Remember all that's going to get covered in a lot of rust later on so it'll weather up. And then on the roof I went ahead and cut out some strips of tape and I messed off the uh, roof walks. So what I'm actually going to do is I'll paint these silver I think. Uh, since the prototype has silver roof walks uh, that were replaced I'll just repaint them when the time comes. Uh, but the primary thing is that I want to completely coat the top with rust because of just how bad the rot is on the side. This entire top portion is going to be covered in rust, so I'm going to be using a dark brown uh, to paint all that on, and that's actually where we're going to be starting the video off. This is the color I'm going to use to start. It's earth brown, as you can see. Pretty standard color. I got a long liner brush, and I'm going to be taking this paint, and I'm going to be tucking it directly under these roof walks, because as I said before, these roof walks are see-through, and you want to make sure those get covered up. Otherwise, you'll see right through those things. So I just take the paint like this, and I just carefully work it under these roof walks like this. Uh, I'll take a different brush, and I'll take the paint out towards the edge. With the paint tucked in underneath the roof walks, I can now go in and take some darker brown and black mixed together. And I'm going to start hand brushing this on the outer edge of this roof walk, making sure to get everything carefully covered. And what you do is you just brush in the color like this first, and then you go out and then model your streaks, okay? So go in like this and then pull that paint out very gently with the very tip of that brush. If you are using a liner brush or any other kind of brush, you can basically do the same effect and you get that really nice coating. And you can see it's all traveling down. That's what we want right there. So the other area we need to work on too is going to be around that hatch area on the top of the car. Let me load my bristles up with some more paint. This area up here where those hatches are, this is a big area where you get a lot of rust. So we're going to get that all coated up as well. Very heavily coated like this. And later on we'll add our oils, our different colored oils, and some splotches of rust and stuff here and there to mix things up a little bit. But this is going to be the basic covering. You start like this, work it up, and then I just will take and I'll kind of work that paint up like this and streak it upwards. Again to look like the rain is washing that grime downward over time and pulling that rust down the side. It's very prototypical that way. So there's that effect. That's what we're going to be doing for the entire roof of this car, is that. So what we need to work on now is that rust. There's a lot of it on the sides as you can see, and again we have the three different colors of rust like I talked about. But what we need to concentrate on first is doing the large darker patches. These are going to be the base effect. Uh, it'd be easier to do this and then put all the other rust effects over the darker patches than trying to do all the light rust effects, building those up, and then incorporating the darker patches. It's do it never really um, looks right, in my opinion. Like, it can be done, but it never looks as subtle as if you were to just blend the colors together starting from darkest to lightest. Um, so that's just my personal opinion and that's how I'm going to do it here. As you can see we got a lot of rust dots and we got a lot of like heavy concentrated grind patches and like rust pitting and everything. And what we're going to do is paint all that on first with a dark acrylic mix and then we'll come back and start doing the oil streaking. 
The oil streaks are going to be a mixture of heavy washes and then we'll do streaking with a fine tip brush to do uh, basically accomplish that. You can use dry brushing effects for this, however it's pretty difficult with oils and I prefer to just do this by hand. Plus again the streaks are very defined so I want to have those defined streaks by just um, hand painting each individual line. I know it seems like a lot of a, a lot more of a pain but once you get going on this it actually is pretty quick and I'll show you when we get to that. I've made a little mix of very dark brown here and I got a very fine tip liner brush that I'm going to be using to apply the heavier rust pits and scratches on the sides like areas around the handrails for example on the car body around these ribs there's a lot of rust <clears throat> a lot of pitting and everything like that that uh, really starts to rot away at the car body sides especially over time as more and more salt gets spilled down the sides these things just I mean they really do get eaten up so I'm gonna be replicating all that and I just take a little bit of water into my brush and I mix a little bit of that paint in there and I just start by modeling and representing the small patches of darker heavier rust with this liner brush you're not going to get it 100 percent exact but as long as you have a prototype that you can use to refer to to try to at least get the uh, relative correct location of these heavier rust pits that's fine I'm just gonna go in here and I'm just gonna try to paint these in as best as I can based on where they are on my prototype I am doing this on the prototype side by the way I made sure uh, on the opposite side I've basically done the exact same thing already and I'll go back and uh, uh, work on both sides over different courses of time but again just take your time when doing this and just try to get it as close as you can so this is what these are going to look like after you've painted them on you can see the heavier coated areas are where that heavier patch of rust is going to be and I've laid in some of the bigger rust pits and what I need to do now is copy some of the very fine small dots that I'm not able to do with the liner brush and I'm going to be using a little bit of black uh, just here and there to represent these and I'm using a fine tip brush so I'm just going to go in like this and just add some of these real fine little dots just as background color like this to enhance some of this and again it's just these small little dots that help to add more life uh, to these little rust patches because this is a common thing you see and sometimes like in these little dots aren't as prominent and you really only see them if you're actually standing right up next to the car uh, but in this case there are some prominent ones that are visible on the side so I am going to try to represent these very lightly here just where they're needed again So now that we got the majority of the acrylic work out of the way, let's go ahead and start laying in some of these oils. And this is going to be basically the first layer of oil. We're not going to try to tackle all of that heavy rust right at once. We need to build this up in progressive layers with different effects. And the first one is to lay the basic overall rust wash to the sides of this car to get the right car body tone. Overall, it's very rusty, like I said, but at the top especially, there's a lot of rust. I'm going to be using my Windsor & Newton Water Mixable Oil. And I'm going to be using a flat bristle brush here. This one, you can see, is real flat. And I also got my liner brush that I'm going to be using for the oil application. Over on my mixing paper over here in the corner, I have a little bit of that oil dabbed on the piece of paper. And I'm going to be using this flat brush. I'm going to dip it in a little bit of thinner like this. And I'm going to pick up some of this paint. And I'm going to go for a pretty heavy wash. And it's going to start at the very top around these hatches. So if I take the camera in and we get this car up close, watch this brush action here. I'm just going to take in a little too much... Uh, little too much thinner that's okay just go in and start layering in that brushwork again concentrated mostly around the heavier builds up areas around the hatch trough just building this up and I'm moving it upwards with the stroke here like this to build that and get that color <clears throat> Moving into the sides now, I'm going to use a relatively thin wash to uh, color up these panels. And some of these washes I'll vary a little bit uh, because some of these panels are darker than others and I want to um, match that color that's on the prototype. So you can see this is a very thin wash and as you stretch it out it'll get thinner and thinner and that's exactly what I want because some of these panels are a little bit thinner than others like these end panels for example and then the only thing that makes it look heavy is the actual fine streaks but the base color of rust on this car is actually pretty light so I'm not trying to overdo this 
And again, this is always better to just go light and build up the colors. Never try to overachieve this by trying to layer on a really thick wash or a heavy coat of oil or acrylic, whichever you're using, because uh, you'll end up getting things that are too chunky. And especially with oils, the problem is you'll end up building the oils up so much that the layer is so thick that it takes forever to dry. This is a very light washer. This is going to dry very, very quickly, within a few minutes. And that gives you ample time and ample control to build this up relatively quickly. So for example here, on the opposite side I've already kind of done this effect. This is one layer of wash for the most part and then on some of these other panels I've built up the wash times two and times three in certain areas to get a varying degree of heavier rust channeling. And again this is based on prototype photos and you can see I've gotten that built up. As I apply this wash, I'm also going to work it on on the coupler box area and on this inner um, rib, basically, or this rather the uh, inner sill of the car. I'm not so much working it on the end bays. The end bays have a very unique weathering where they have these scratches and streaks, which I'm modeling with straight dry brushing effects to achieve that look. So again, you know, it's a combination of little techniques to get what you want. But make sure when you're doing these washes, build the color up slowly. Don't try to lather it all on in one shot. While I wait for the first wash to dry, I went ahead and started painting the walkway silver. And I'm actually using a silver sharpie for this. This is a great little uh, trick effect to model some uh, metallic paint chipping on boxcar roofs, for example, or doing these bright silver roof walks in this case. I will be doing a little bit of weathering up here, but I want to make it look a little bit newer since these roof walks were apparently replaced. What you do with this is you take the sharpie and you run it along the edge first, like this. And you're going to hit those edges of those panels. I'll clean my tip off in case I got any oil or anything on that. I want to keep this relatively clean. And then what you basically do, if you can see that color difference there, this one I already painted, this one I haven't. You take the Sharpie and put it all the way in the corner like this and run it down like this. I'll hit those edges and then I'll start going across like this. Just like that. This can kind of be hard to see at first, uh, but it'll start filling up a little bit as you go. Uh, this thing's pretty thin too, so you don't really have to worry about it clogging up the uh, little holes or the perforated sections in the walkway. Uh, but you just do this. You'll build up the coats over if you need to. And you just get them painted up, just like this. And like I said, I will I might have to go back and do another coat. We'll see what this looks like, but one should be enough. So now it's time to have a little bit of fun here, and this step is my favorite part. I like to take a little bit of oil, and I like to add it to these little rust dots, uh, just in the center of the little dot, and I do a pretty heavy little application of this paint. And what I'm going to be trying to achieve here is the actual streaks on the car body side. So what I'm going to do is put the streaks on first, and then we can lay on the heavy streaks uh, with a fine tip brush. This is the oil paint rendering technique where you take a little bit of oil and then stretch it with thinner. This is a great way to achieve fading effects, all kinds of different washes and effects basically. Uh, but this effect here is for rust spots. So I'm taking the burnt umber and I'm just layering it in in kind of a random manner honestly. Uh, just in those darker spots. And I'm going to take and basically brush over this with a brush loaded with thinner. And I'll demonstrate that once I get all these little spots filled in. Just take your time. Make sure to get all the little ones filled. Uh, this will be important in the long run here. This is that flat bristle brush. Notice I flattened out the tip and I've dipped this in thinner. And the brush is nice and wet. It's loaded with thinner right now. What you need to do is take this. Try to get it as straight as possible. And if I adjust the camera that my hand is not in the way, you'll be able to watch this. Watch that brush here. As it goes down, it picks that paint up. Go slow with this though, okay? Make sure you're not rushing through this. You need to make sure that you're going relatively slow and picking that paint up. And as you go down, you're pulling that paint down with you with that loaded brush. If your brush starts getting kind of dirty, just empty the bristles out on a paper towel a napkin, whatever, and then reload your bristles with thinner and that should work for you. But just continue to streak the rust down from those heavier rust pits. 
and this will make a good base for our following effects. This is a wet brush loaded with a lot of thinner here and I'm gonna dry off the brush just a little bit and basically what you do with this brush is you carefully streak the paint down try to keep this as straight as possible and work slow because you want to have those defined lines if you rush through this you'll blur a lot of that paint so what you need to do is just go really slow and work that paint down like this and these flat brushes are ideal for this technique because they fit right in those ribs as you can see that one's a little crooked just go back straighten it up but don't work this oil too much you still want to keep the defined streaks just try to keep it as flat as you can if you need to with this brush when it starts getting kind of dirty like this clean these bristles off dip it in a little bit more thinner uh, clean it off on the napkin and start over again I'm gonna start working on these bays now and on the particular prototype that I'm working with it's got a lot of concentrated rust right on these gates and so I'm gonna use a rather frayed brush here to apply straight oil undiluted right to this area and I'm gonna streak it up on that just like that uh, same with the one in the back just like this it's just applying a little bit at a time and now that I got that applied I'm gonna kind of uh, streak it down just like this give us a little variety in color make it look like some of the rain streaking that rust a little bit it's always gonna be heavier on these end bays where that kick-up spray is gonna be just like this so I can try to paint that individual little line like that and then same on the opposite side and then again I might uh, vary this depending on how heavy the prototype is whether in this case there is some pretty defined kick up on the ends but with the lighter rust I'm only adding this to certain parts of these bays so I'm only adding it basically as like a color highlight just here and there for some color difference some variety that kind of thing This is what the rust spots look like after you've done the oil rendering. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. On itself here, this car could be completed if you were doing a different prototype. This alone looks very good. And I've done this on a multitude of different other cars that I've done so far. Um, but in this case, we've got to enhance it quite a bit more because the prototype does have a lot more heavy rust. Uh, this is only a base effect. Again, if we refer to prototype photos, you can see what we've got to accomplish now is these streaks. You can see a lot of streaks coming down from the top and they're all very defined so we're gonna to have to paint them by hand there's a lot of darker rust and then there's a lot of uh, light rust coming in which is burnt sienna so we're gonna start accomplishing this now before we can do that though we gotta let all of this oil work dry up for at least a day or two before we touch it again at this point what would happen is if you try to put more oil on it you're gonna start picking up all the oil that's still underneath this and it's gonna start peeling off and you're gonna ruin this base effect you need to let this stuff dry before you mess with it uh, regardless of what kind of oil paint it is whether it be uh, regular oil or water mixable oil let it dry thoroughly before you apply more paint to it so I'm gonna let this dry for a day or two alright so it's now been three days since I last worked on this car I let everything really dry up well I have not clear coated anything on this car so far uh, I did dull coat this model um, before I started the project, before I did any decaling or anything, but I haven't sealed anything up to this point, so nothing really has been changed. Uh, the only thing I have worked on a little bit, uh, I finished up the installation of the hatches and I painted those according to the uh, photos. And then I started doing a little bit of oil technique on the roof uh, by applying just a little bit of burnt umber and a little bit of that raw sienna which we'll be working with. And then I finished up the roof walk basically by uh, painting that silver. So you can see the roof walk has that brand new silver appearance and it's just starting to rust a little bit. As you can see it's starting to streak down, especially around those hatches where a lot of that rust builds up again. So you can see, again, those are very clean. Again, according to what they look like on the prototype, so that's a cool little effect. Anyway, we need to start working on the rust on the sides now. The heavier rust, not we got these rust spots taken care of. The prototype again is very heavily rusted, so we're going to be doing um, dry brush techniques with a thick layer of oil. We're going to be doing the fine streak effects, and we're going to be beating up some oil as well to do fine streaks. So there's a couple ways you can do this, and I'll demonstrate that for you. So let's go ahead and get started with the. Again, what I'm referring to here, notice the fine streaks coming down from the top of that roof where the heavy layer of rust is. Uh, you can see these individual streaks, they're clear as day. And then, of course, they're defined and enhanced a little bit with uh, raw sienna, which we'll add later. Right now, we need to add the main streak effect. 
again here, there are two ways you can do this. You can take the paint with a fine tip brush, like this. You can beat it up right where the rough area of the rough spot where it's mostly coming down from starts and then you just spread the paint out with a thinner technique just like how we did these rough spots or we can use the fine tip brush again take the oil paint dilute it with a little bit of this thinner mix it together and then hand paint each one of these streaks this is uh, something that you can do so there's more than one way to do a lot of these techniques really and I'll demonstrate both of them for you so you guys basically get the gist of what I'm trying to do and you'll get a good idea of how you can recreate and you can choose which one of these methods you prefer yourself so in one corner I'll do the rust beads so in this case I'll take my oil paint and I'll put two dots right here this is going to be where two of the streaks match up on the prototype and that's what I'm going to be trying to replicate there's also one right here and I will also do a hand painted one and this is what I've been doing is I've been hand painting these dots right and what you do is you just take the diluted oil and you take and start from one corner at a time and you just very carefully paint these lines on that was a little little too much but you get the idea I'll go back and straighten that out but you just basically take and if I zoom in so you guys can actually see this a little bit better you just individually take and paint on each one of these lines which in this case they're very thick very thick lines here and you just build up the color some you can make them fine some you can make thicker and more pronounced just depends that's one way of doing it right one way of doing it there we go that's a little bit better now the other way again is that oil transition effect you take a little bit of paint thinner load it up on a flat brush and then you just uh, very carefully streak it down to replicate those streaks you can see both basically give you the same effect and the advantage with this is you can let this layer of oil dry you can continue to build up these layers if you choose uh, you can pretty much do the same thing with the brush technique as well uh, but again doing one of these techniques is totally your call both of them will give you the same effect but basically I'm going to go back and forth between these different effects and get this uh, side done we'll come back and look at it okay guys this is what the car looks like after about two hours of work this took quite a long time to uh, get all these streaks right but um, it was worth it in the end because it came out pretty good on the ribs the rib treatment I used a lot uh, thicker layers of that oil paint to hit up all these ribs because the ribs on the prototype again are very very rusty um, I might have overdone the patches a little bit but I'll go back and maybe clean those up and probably touch up this rust a little bit more uh, you can see it's a little bit coarse uh, which I kinda don't like um, but I might be able to tie it together we'll see what it kinda looks like after we apply the next color which will be the burnt sienna here this will be the next color or raw sienna rather this is going to give us our lighter shade of rust so if I pull up the prototype photo again and we zoom in on this you can see what I'm talking about if you actually look at the rust you can see it's the dark shade at the top and then the lighter shade is a completely different color this is what the raw sienna is going to achieve for us so that's what we need to actually work on next uh, but what we're going to do now is we will get this all set up we'll let all this dry okay guys here it is now I've uh, been working on this for about two hours now it's now two in the morning I'm gonna go ahead and call tonight but you can see I got the fine rust streaks done on the side and again I'm just matching that up to the prototype photo above here in the back and everything looks pretty good this took a long time though like I said and I also put a little bit of oil on these roof um, hatch supports and wrapped all that up so that's pretty much good to go uh, so I'm pretty happy with it on the ribs there's a lot more heavier patches of rust so I just did a thicker application more of like a dry brushing technique to apply the oils to the ribs to get me the color that I needed the next thing that we got to do with this after all this dries up will be to add the raw sienna okay now this color here is going to be what's going to give us the proper color contrast that we see on the prototype where you can see the heavy patches of dark rust at the top 
transitions into this orange rust at the bottom as it moves down the side of the car. So that's what we'll work on next here. Uh, but what we need to do now is let this dry again for about 24 hours. Uh, probably by Saturday night this should be dry enough uh, that it's not tacky and I'll be able to start working on that oil, uh, the next shade of oil. And that'll pretty much wrap it up. If we need to, we can touch up stuff. Uh, this is kind of a good time to just put the car aside, sit on it, compare it to the prototype, and then just decide if there's anything else you need to do at this point with the one coat that you have. If you need to add more rust dots, which in this particular case I also added some more rust dots because the prototype has this little patch of dots here, which I actually missed when I painted them on this car, on the prototype side, so I actually added those. Uh, so this is just kind of a time to let everything dry up, decide if you want to add anything else, or do anything else, or touch up anything else. Uh, but until Saturday, I'm just going to let this dry up, and then we'll come back and we'll start applying our Rossiana wash. Okay, so I got my flat bristle brush now, loaded up with a little bit of thinner and a little bit of that Rossiana paint, and we're going to be adding this in only certain parts of these rust patches to add a variety of color and this is going to be the rust transition uh, because on the prototype there is a lot of this orange or rust coming down from the heavier streaks so I'm going to go down and again I'm going to vary this wash in progressive layers uh, to build up the coats after this layer dries what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll do some um, basically oil dry brushing to finish this up using the burnt umber again to do the large patches of rust streaking that comes down but this is just the last effect uh, to get the rust mainly the color transitions down here where the rust streaks kind of uh, start ending and more of that color starts bleeding out that's what I'm trying to achieve with this look but this is a great way to get a really really natural looking rust tone and rust effect on the side of your model cars not just covered hoppers but box cars tank cars anything I've let the oil layer that we put on just dry up for about an hour here. It looks pretty good. We're starting to get the right car body color. It's matching real close to the prototype, which I'm pretty happy about. The last thing we need to do weathering-wise for the sides with oil paint is do the very light dry brushing effect at the top with a very heavy layer. <clears throat> and so what I'm going to use is a rather frayed-out brush. I'm basically going to pick up a little bit of oil paint just a little bit, and this is basically a dry brushing method. And the oils are pretty good about uh, being used in this application because you can stretch them pretty well. Acrylic dries out pretty quick, um, but all you got to do here is just start from the top. Just add a little of that color like that, and then just slowly blend it down like this, kind of gently, and that'll darken up that top portion where the heaviest layer of that rust is going to be. And that's what you want. You can see it's almost immediate you get that transition, and you can work that out as much as you like. Now it's not working out too much on this car uh, where it's completely covering. It's just more over right at that top layer, um, right at the very top of these ribs is where the heaviest of that rust patching is taking place. So I'm just going to be lightly dry brushing this, but I mean there are some examples of these cars where it's pretty extensive and you can really go heavy on this and the oil will allow you to do that. Of course you can also uh, do this with acrylic as well, but in this case I'm using the oil. So I'm just going to do this and we'll start filling all this in We'll let this dry up, and then we should be pretty well good on the car sides, and we can start applying our decals. Okay, so I let this again dry for about 20 minutes or so, and I went ahead and applied the decals. You can see I got the uh, microscale car weigh data, and I got the AEX patches from that decal sheet. Now, if we take a minute, you can see with the oils freshly applied, you can see the bright, vibrant tones of rust we got here, and it's pretty much a dead match to the prototype, so I'm very happy with that. Uh, but that's the power of oil paint right there. I mean, you can do a lot of amazing stuff. This is just one example. I have many, many cars I've done this technique to, and it's amazing to see what these look like when they come um, come together. Anyway, on the ends, I also got the decals mostly applied to this point. I've just done some basic uh, work to the ends as well, just like what we've, um, we've been doing on the sides. Just need to get the numbers for that. This side, same thing. And this end. Okay, Okay. so it's the next day now, and I got the car pretty well tied together. I let everything tack up pretty well, and it's looking good. Uh, and I went ahead and installed the patching on the sides, the black stencil patching with the microscale decals, like I said. And I got the AEX patches on now, and they look real good. car's numbered. And then on the ends, same thing. All that's pretty well wrapped up. I'm pretty happy with the results so far. 
and I also have gotten the wheels reinstalled on this model as well and that's just my standard weathering mix of earth brown and black for the trucks and then burnt umber for the wheels uh, same with the couplers the same color uh, but so far everything's looking pretty good uh, what I'm going to do now is doll coat this car and that'll seal in again all the uh, last minute decal work and then we'll have be basically ready for the powdered uh, application here now the other thing I did um, was I installed the safety stripes as you can see on both sides the car has the DOT stripes and I modeled the chipping and the heavy washes on those stripes as well and that's an important thing when you model the safety stripes especially on older cars make sure you weather over them I see a lot of people just put the safety tape on their models and even though if it is prototypically correct to have that tape they don't weather the tape you gotta weather it because these do get beat up in real life they start chipping off and a lot of times you see cars where they almost completely peeled off and they replace them over time so it's important to weather them anyways here's a good look at both sides of the car now I'm very very happy and very pleased with the uh, way this one turned out you can see the very heavy rust very heavy uh, again, it just uh, looks absolutely beautiful. So what we're going to do now is work on the powder work and we'll be able to basically wrap this model up here. Alright, here we are again looking at the model for the last time here in this video. You can see we got the trucks finished up with the powder, so are the couplers done up. Uh, I just did a very light application of powder on the trucks to keep it simple. Uh, not too much. Uh, the prototype has them pretty lightly dusted. They're not too, too grimy in terms of fresh rust like these effects uh, the powders achieve so I kept that pretty light uh, overall I'm very happy with the effects on the car body this took a long time this was a couple weeks of work but it turned out pretty well and I'm very happy with it uh, you can see everything looks really well and again it aligns very well with the prototype uh, here's the opposite side again I'm trying to keep it in shot here this side's a little bit different in color you can see there's a lot more of that raw sienna uh, I just mixed things up a little bit by adding a, and incorporating a little bit more sienna just here and there to give it again some rust highlights, some variety, some difference. I really like the <clears throat> the underbody here. You can see the amount of grime and then the kick up on the bays that I added. That's the acrylic, basic acrylic work. Get them the nice weathering on the trucks. All that rust. You can see I added the fine streaks to the chipping on the undersill there. That's a cool little touch. And again, just as a quick look, the ends with the kick-up spray, got some rust pits, the patching, and again, a lot of that fine rust coming down from the top there as well. So again, another very nice model and another one in the bag for my collection. So I'm very happy with that. That's actually the last of four AEX cars I've done. I made four of these. This was the last one I modeled, but I actually did another version of this, the AEX 1. 1490 which is a heavy pitter I made this one here AEX 11875 this one's a little bit lighter with a little bit more rust and then a lot more streaking and then I made this crazy one over here which I really wanted to make a video of but it was just so complicated and it took so much time that I ended up uh, just kind of giving up and decided just to focus on the weathering uh, but that's all the cars I've been doing and like I said, this one here is the last one that I actually completed in this set. So I'm pretty happy with how all those turned out, in particular with this one. And I'm glad I got to film this one for you guys. And hopefully you all liked this video as usual. I got two more prototypes to make, and you guys can stay tuned for those videos here. I'm not going to spoil it. You'll just have to wait to see what the next ones are. But I think you guys are going to like them. Uh, they are going to be two more hoppers, though, and they are AEX prototypes. So you guys can stay tuned for that. All right, so I'll see you in the next video, guys. Take it easy.